sometimes as much as we are ready for our next, our next blessing, our next relationship, our next move, our next job, God knows what we can actually handle. <laughs> everyone welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is melody and i make faith-based content here on youtube i post new videos every single monday so that's something you're interested in definitely be sure and subscribe i would love to have you join the family so in today's video we are going to be talking about the goodness of god and how sometimes the goodness of god and his faithfulness can look like delays detours or even the lord taking us on the road less traveled and i think it's important that we talk about this and unpack what these delays and detours can feel like but also have the correct perspective on the character of the God that we serve. Oftentimes when we don't have the correct understanding or the correct perspective of God's character or even what he is working together as we are experiencing delays and detours we can have the tendency to be like all right God this is taking too long let me go ahead and take matters into my own hands and that is where we start getting into murky water. That is where we start allowing sin or feeling like we know best to enter into to our lives and our hearts. And so my hope with this video, as we unpack this specific text in Exodus chapter 13, specifically this Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 through 19, that we're able to understand more clearly and more personally the kindness of God. And I think the more that we understand the kindness of God and the ways that he is actually being kind when he allows us to not get to that destination too quick, or when he brings us on this roundabout way to get to the place that he's wanting us to get to, the more again that we'll be able to just surrender, truly just having faith and allowing him to guide us one step at a time when we might not be able to see the entire pathway. So that's what we're going to be getting into in today's video, sis. I'm excited. It's definitely going to be more on the shorter side because our text is shorter, which I feel like is a great kind of balance compared to last week's video. We were unpacking like 19 verses. So be sure to grab your Bibles, grab your pens, grab your highlighters. But before we dive into it, I want to go ahead and pause here and thank the sponsor of today's video, the Created for This Membership Club. So if you guys didn't know, I have a membership club and it is called the Created for This Membership Club. It is a club for women who want to grow in their relationship with God, surrounded by other women who want the same thing. Each month inside of the club, we have a weekly devotional video that is put up on Sundays where we are unpacking a different woman in the Bible and her story each and every week. We also have monthly Bible studies where we do a live Bible study call, going through the SOAP method, unpacking the text, sharing our applications and our observations. We also have a monthly prayer call and a live Q&A. These are opportunities for the sisterhood to come together, for you to put faces to names that you're chatting with in our private group chat. And we also have an app, sis. The app is here and i am so excited we have recently moved platforms so now all of the club goodies both the material and the community is in one place and you can just bring us with you in your pocket wherever you go there are women in this club that have met up in person that have spent the holidays together that have traveled across the country okay i'm talking flying from one country to another to connect and this is really the space where if you lean in if you show up off authentic, wanting accountability, wanting encouragement, and also being willing to give that same thing back, you will meet amazing people. So if community is something that is top of mind for you, you're wanting to grow in your faith, and again, wanting to do this surrounded by women who want the same thing, then the CFT sisterhood is for you. Right now, if you sign up before April 8th, you also will be able to get 20% off your first month. So don't miss out, sis. I will have all of the information. I'll have the code right here for that 20% off but I will also have it down in the description box with the link for you to sign up. I cannot wait to see you inside the club doors and I know the other sisters are gonna be so excited to meet you too. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and pivot into this text. Again, this is going to be Exodus chapter 13 verses 17 through 19. And it says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them along the road to the land of the Philistines, even though it was nearby. For God said, the people will change their minds and return to Egypt if they face war. So he led the people around towards the Red Sea along the road of the wilderness. And the Israelites left the land of Egypt in battle formation. 
Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear a solemn oath saying, God will certainly come to your aid. Then you must take my bones with you from this place. All right, sis, let's unpack this text. Let's talk about some truths that we can pull out and hold into our own hearts as we are navigating our own delays and our own detours with the Lord. So the first thing that truly stands out to me is the fact that God knew the Israelites better than the Israelites knew the Israelites. So as the Israelites are finally, okay, finally coming out of Egypt, they have been enslaved for hundreds of years and they are freshly, freshly free people, right? And God knew at this state, their emotions, right? Maybe physically they can handle the task of going to war, which we can see in verse, what is it? Verse 18 at the end of it, it says that they left in battle formation. So physically they might have been ready to go to war, but mentally, spiritually, the Lord knew. And that's why he says in verse 17, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen right now. The Lord said, the people will change their minds and return to Egypt if they face war. So God knew them better than they knew themselves. And I feel like this is a truth that we have to hold on to as we are navigating our own walks with the Lord that sometimes the no, sometimes the delay, sometimes the not right now is for our own good because God knows we are not ready. He knows, okay, physically she might be there, mentally, mm -mm, we still got some work to do. Or maybe mentally and physically she might be there, but spiritually, oh no, my daughter needs a little bit more time with me, a little bit on this road less traveled. And the reason why I call this particular verse out is because God knew that if I send them into this battle too soon, they will want to return to bondage. And that's the second thing that we have to remember that yes, the Israelites were free finally from bondage in Egypt, but the Egypt was not out of them yet. There is a work that has to be done on the inside of us that only God can truly do to free us internally from some of the physical bondage that we have experienced in life. And just like the Israelites were physically in bondage, there was still some mental bondage that he needed to work out of them. And how often is that us says, we might be ready to get to that next place, the job, the relationship, moving across the country, the new season, the new blessing, but are we actually actually operating and the fullness of the freedom that Christ died on the cross for us to experience? Or are we still holding on to some of the things that we have been through? I know for myself, it has definitely been a journey to actually be free from some of the things that I've been through. It's easy to hold on to things and sometimes it's not until we're on the detour and we're on that delay and we're walking with the Lord and like, okay, God, why is this taking so long? That he highlights how the Egypt isn't truly out of us yet. And that leads me to the third truth here that we can hold into our hearts, that it was going to take longer for God to fulfill this promise because he wasn't taking them on this direct route, but again, it was for their good and ultimately for his glory. If you know how the book of Exodus ends, basically this set of Israelites end up wandering around the wilderness for 40 years years and God in that time is working through them again to free them from the Egypt inside of them. There are people that are used to being busy, productive because they had to. And so God is training them to follow a Sabbath, to trust him, to rely on him. And unfortunately, because of their disobedience, that generation never got to see the promised land. The next generation in the book of Joshua does though, and they follow the Lord's instructions to the T. And so all of that goes to say, that God is taking us on this delay or this detour for our good. And that's something that we can trust and hold on to. As much as it might seem unfair, as much as you might not be able to make sense of it in a moment, we have to go back to the character of God that we see on display here. He is a kind and gracious God who knows what we are capable of doing, capable of handling, and he knows what we are not capable of handling. So I don't know who this is for, but sis, it is time to trust the Lord in a new way. It is time to trust his timing and more than that, to trust his goodness, that his no, that his not right now is not because he's mean or mad at you, but because he has your best interest in mind. And this also is the opportunity for us to go to the Lord and ask him, Lord, search me. Where am I carrying around bondage that you want me to be free 
from. We don't wanna be like the Israelites who the Lord actually removed from their oppression and removed from bondage, but were carrying it around and that impacted how they related to the Lord and in their walk with him. This bondage was a hindrance to them truly trusting the Lord, his goodness, his timing, and his instructions. And so let this just be that reminder that we need that we serve a good and kind God who is patient, but also just, okay? Who is kind, but also has standards and wants us to operate in a specific way, meaning he wants us to be obedient to him. So that's all I've got for you today, sis. These are truths that I've been holding in my own heart as I've been walking out my own delays and my own detours with the Lord and really trying to understand God, what's going on? And I'm coming back to his kindness each and every time. And as I do, it's empowering me and encouraging me to just trust him to light the path so I can take that one next step. And again, the more that we see the character of God and understand it and experience it for ourselves, the more that we're really going to be able to appreciate this walk with him. All right, sis, that is going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And one more time, thank you so much to the creator for this membership club, my membership club, for sponsoring this video. Again, you can sign up using this code right here, and it will also be linked down in the description box and get 20% off your first month. All right, now with all of that being said, of course, sis, it is now your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know, what is a character attribute of God that you go back to and hold on to when you are walking through your own delays and detours? I think the more that we all can share who God truly is, not only just factually, right? Like who we see him be in the Bible, but also who he has been to us, the more that we'll be able to see just all the different facets of this God that we serve. So definitely take a second, drop your response down below. I'll be sure to drop mine and then take a scroll on through. As always, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Peace.